welcome back class to our course on mechanical behavior materials part 2 so we have completed uh, discussion about uh, fracture mechanisms both ductile and brittle uh, today we are going to talk about uh, fatigue testing okay and then relevant mechanisms so if you remember in the course one we have already talked about uh, uni axle tensile testing uh, impact testing hardness testing okay now we will talk about fatigue test. Okay, so let's proceed. Okay, so when we talk about fatigue, here the load or stress it is going to vary with time. Okay, order does it mean that you know your load is going to vary something like this? So if we have time on the x axis and on the y axis, if you have p or say sigma, it is going to vary with respect to time. And whenever that happens, we call that the material is under fatigue loading. Okay, and it is very important to you know understand what is happening in uh, fatigue loading because most of the failure what you observe they are happening because of the fatigue loading. See uni asset and side loading you rarely observe uh, in reality. There are few cases but in most of the cases whenever you see failure in your surroundings it's happening because of the fatigue loading and in some books you will see 95 percent of the fatigue loading Fatigue, a failure happens because of the fatigue loading. In some books, you will see 90%. So, it's it's a very high fraction. Okay. And why it is dangerous? Because the fatigue failure can happen even if the applied stress or maximum applied stress is lower than the ill stress. Okay. So, if we have the loading cycle like this, so we call it cycle, right? So here we are going to have maximum stress. So this point is maximum in a cycle. And this point at the bottom is your minimum. Right? So I'm assuming that the fatigue loading cycle is say sinusoidal. So you are going to have maximum and minimum. Right? So when we talk about fatigue failure, it can happen if the maximum stress is lower than the L point. So fatigue failure can occur even if say this maximum if I denote as S max. So S max it's less than S y. Okay, where S Y is your yield strength. Now compare this with your uni axial tension. So when you are doing uni axial tension and you are plotting engine stress, engine strain, you know how to calculate S Y, right? Now below that, we always say that it is an elastic regime above that it has now plasticity, right? There is a plastic regime. So it has to go beyond S Y so that material can fracture. That is what we have learned when we are talking about uni axial tensile loading. Now see here what is happening in fatigue loading, in fatigue testing, failure, the fracture of the sample can occur even if the maximum stress is below S Y and that is why it makes it dangerous. Okay, that even if your you know stress is lower than L point, the material is going to fail. So there are different the type of cycles you can have when you talk about fatigue test. So the first is random. So the name itself suggests that the cycle cycle is random nature, right? So it's like say something like this, some random cycle. Okay. So you have T here and then stress on the y axis. 
तो ये साइकिल इज रैंडम नाउ सेकेंड इज कंप्लीटली रिवर्स and when this happens completely reversed okay you are going to have maximum stress and minimum stress having the same value but they will be opposite to each other that means if the maximum stress is positive minimum stress is going to be negative the value remains same so be something like this okay so if this is your maximum stress let's say if i denote this as sigma 1 the minimum one is going to be minus sigma 1 and this is your zero here okay so this is the case of completely reverse stress cycle so maximum stress sigma max is equal to sigma 1 sigma mean a minimum is equal to minus sigma 1 and the last one is the repeated cycle okay so it is going to be similar to the completely reverse stress cycle only thing is that sigma 1 is not equal to uh, sigma max is not equal to sigma minimum okay so it could be something like this okay so sigma here and t here so i can say that completely reverse stress cycle is a subset of repeated cycle okay it's a special case of repeated cycle where sigma maximum is equal to uh, sigma minimum on the negative side okay so these are the three types of cycles you can observe now let's talk about the parameters we typically use when we talk about fatigue testing so let me draw a cycle here so stress parameters so you have sigma okay. and say you have a situation say you have a situation like this so this is the general case we are going to not talk about what are the different stress parameters we have when we talk about fatigue loading okay so this is a loading cycle so this point here you know it's a sigma max this point here so a will correspond to say sigma not a let's see one okay point 2 will correspond to sigma mean so when i say m i n it's minimum okay there would be m e a n which is the average so it will be somewhere here so this becomes sigma mean which is the average and there is one more which is sigma range so the difference between the maximum and the minimum so this range is called sigma range or stress range okay so now you know if we i give you a stress cycle a loading cycle you know what is sigma max sigma mean min sigma mean average and then the sigma range okay so if you talk about sigma r which is stress range it is sigma max minus sigma minimum right see the schematic on the right side there is something called sigma a which is stress amplitude okay 
this will be given as sigma max minus sigma average or sigma mean. So in this case, I can say that this is your stress amplitude. Okay, now if I, what is sigma mean? That is normal, right? Sigma mean I can always write as, it's an average. So sigma max plus sigma minimum by two, okay? So we can now put this sigma mean value in sigma A. So this can be written as sigma max minus uh, sigma Max plus sigma minimum by two or sigma max minus sigma minimum by two. This is sigma A. So amplitude we know, we know what is stress range, we know what is sigma average or sigma mean. There is something called A which is amplitude ratio. And it is defined as sigma A divided by sigma M. So sigma M here is sigma mean, M E N. So this will be 1 minus R divided by 1 plus R. Where R is called, now this is very important, load ratio or stress ratio. Or we also call it an R ratio directly. And this R ratio is defined as sigma minimum by sigma maximum. So if you put this R value in amplitude ratio, you are going to see it will come out to be 1 minus R divided by 1 plus R. It will come out to be sigma A by sigma M. Okay. So we have now defined different stress parameters in terms of stress range, stress amplitude, sigma m, amplitude ratio, and R ratio. Okay. So if I give you some values of sigma mass, sigma mean, etc., then you should be able to figure out what are these different stress parameters. Okay. Now let's do some exercise. So suppose you have only tensile loading or so tensile stresses. So you have a cycle. So zero is here, sigma is here. So you have a cycle which is something like this. Okay. Now I ask you, hey, what could be the R ratio, whether it is positive or negative? So what is R ratio? It's sigma minimum divided by sigma maximum. So R is sigma minimum divided by sigma maximum. So it is going to be in this case positive, right? So this is tensile, tensile loading. Okay, so the minimum and maximum both are on the tensile side, right? So tensile, tensile loading cycle. Second can be tensile, Compressive loading cycle. So this means that the maximum stress will be on the positive side and the minimum stress will be on the negative side. Right? So it could be something like this. Okay, so what is R here, negative or positive? Now R is again sigma minimum by sigma maximum. Sigma minimum is some negative value. Sigma maximum is positive value. So R is going to be negative. Okay, so qualitatively you know that R is going to be positive or negative. Now let's do some more exercise in terms of calculation of R ratio. So let's have uh, three situations. 
So let's fix maximum stress in all these three situations. Okay. So in one case, you have cycle like this. Okay. In another case, it is like this. And the third one is something like this. And your zero is, say, here. Okay. So sigma is in this direction. So you have three situations. Let's say this is number one, number two, and number three. So three different loading cycles. Now let's understand by using these three what is going to happen with R. Now remember we have pitch sigma max here. Sigma max is pitched for all the three cycles. Okay. So first question is in which case R is positive. Okay, so you have to see whether sigma mean and sigma maximum they are positive or negative. So if you see case number one, sigma maximum is positive, sigma minimum is also positive. R ratio is defined as sigma minimum by sigma maximum. So for one, it is going to be positive. For two also, both are positive. So it is also going to be positive. Now if you come to three, Sigma minimum is negative. Sigma maximum is positive. So R ratio is going to be negative. Okay, that is question one. Okay. Now question two. In which case R ratio or load ratio or stress ratio is the highest? Or say let's rank it. Huh? So what is R ratio? R is sigma minimum divided by sigma maximum. Now here in this particular case, we have pitch sigma max. So sigma max is constant now in all the three cases. So now the R ratio, if I want to compare 1, 2, and 3, it will depend upon the sigma minimum value. right? Higher the man value of sigma minimum, R ratio is going to be higher. Correct? So if you see number one and number two, sigma minimum is higher in number two, right? So if you see number two, sigma minimum is here. So this is your sigma minimum. And in number one, sigma minimum is this point. Okay. So number two, you are going to see higher R ratio as compared to number one. That is point number one. In number three, we know it is negative. So it is going to be the lowest because it's a negative value. Okay. So the highest will be in case of two. Okay. Since sigma minimum is highest. Correct. And lowest is case three as it is negative in this particular case, right? If we have more cases, then you can actually figure out which one is the lowest, which one is in between, right? As it is negative. And one and two are already positive. Okay, now what could be the value of R when sigma, sigma minimum is zero? Or let me say that at what condition R is equal to zero. R will be zero. Okay, so for R to be zero, if you see this equation, if we make sigma minimum is equal to zero, sigma mass is infinite, that is not real situation, right? So the only way it can be zero is when we make sigma minimum equal to zero. So this goes to zero. And if this happens, R is equal to zero. So that means if I draw a stress cycle, 
this is my zero value of sigma here is going to look something like this. Right? Where sigma minimum is equal to zero. So this is a case where R is equal to zero. Now, if we talk about completely reverse cycle, you remember sigma max is equal to minus sigma minimum, right? What could be the value of R? Both are equal, but one is opposite to another one. One is negative to another one. So R is sigma minimum divided by sigma maximum. So this will come out to be minus one. Okay. So it's a special case. Completely reverse cycle is a special case where R is equal to minus one because sigma minimum is negative of sigma maximum. And both values are equal. Okay. This is with respect to sigma and the same thing will be valid. You know, we can apply the same concept in fracture mechanics where we utilize the concept of K, stress intensity factor. Okay. So the same concept can be applied for fracture mechanics. And here, what you have to do, you have to replace sigma by k. So sigma will be replaced by k. So sigma minimum will be now called as k minimum when we talk about fracture mechanics. Okay, sigma maximum will be now called as k maximum. So delta sigma, okay, it will be now delta k, which is k max minus k mean and delta sigma is your stress range sigma r okay so now we are just replacing stress by k because now we are talking about fracture mechanics okay and you know in some books you will also see r is equal to k mean divided by k mass so we are just replacing sigma by k here okay so this is what uh, we use in terms of parameters. And you will see eventually, mostly we are going to use in terms of sigma when we talk about uh, uh, stress-based approach. And when we talk about fracture-based, mechanics-based approach, we are going to use K. So in fatigue, we can have two cases. One is untracked component. Another one is cracked component. So what do I mean by uncracked component and cracked component? So uncracked component is, that means there is no presence of crack or there is no notch. So we have a smooth specimen here. Okay, so if I talk about say dot bone, it will be something like this. Okay, it can be our glass also. We are going to talk about RR mold type specimen, RR mold type test where we use our glass specimen. When we have track component, it contains a notch. Okay, so like our compact tension. It can be SCNT, CCT. We have discussed those configuration, right? So we can have either uncracked component testing or cracked component testing. 
Okay, both can be in the fatigue test. So when we have this, it can be either low cycle fatigue. or high cycle fatigue. This is how we define the term and we are going to discuss all of them. Okay. And these are stress based. So we are going to use sigma always. Okay. Here, since now we have a notch and then you can have crack also in the notch, right? So, like we discussed about fatigue pre cracking. So, you can have cracks. Okay. So, this is fracture mechanics based approach. So, we will use K. Okay. Since we already have a presence of crack in the crack component, here we discuss about the growth. Okay, so only growth is considered. And in this case, both initiation, since this is a smooth specimen, uncracked component, you are going to initiate as well as propagate the crack. So both initiation. and growth of track. Okay. And you must have heard about something called SN curve, right? So this will be here, SN curve. We are going to talk about this in the next lecture. And here we talk about track growth rate. Okay. So finally, you know, when we end the lectures, you are going to see that we are going to use sigma or say S, which is stress, and here, and then, then you are going to see curves like this. So this is called SN curve, and this will come under stress-based approach. And in the track growth rate approach, we are going to observe a curve which will be something like this. Where dA by dN is the track growth rate and delta K is K max minus K minimum. Okay. So here I am summarizing what I am going to discuss in the subsequent lectures. Okay. So we'll start with the uncracked component or stress-based approach. We'll talk about high cycle fatigue, low cycle fatigue. I will introduce you to the concept of SN curve, okay, initiation and growth, both. Both will be included in SN curve. And then we will move towards the fatigue crack growth rate determination and mechanisms, okay, and the nature of the curve. Uh, so it is based on the fracture mechanics approach. And we are going to talk about only growth part of it, okay. And finally, we are going to conclude with some micrograph showing you the different patterns you are going to form when the samples are in fatigue loading, such as striations, beach mark, etc. Okay, so I'm going to stop now and then we'll meet in the next lecture. We'll start with the topic of SN12. Thank you.